Good day guys! We all have that beloved cordless power tool which ain't give as much power as its best days. Most of the cases, the old technology nickel cadmium or nickel metal hydride batteries became weak or even faulty. The same situation is with this DeWalt cordless drill. The battery does not take a charge and does not power the tool anymore. Most likely some of the cells are badly worn out. I like this tool a lot, so I will modernize it and will do it on a budget by adding lithium ion cells, BMS module to protect them and converting an old charger to charge freshly installed lithium ion cells. Such a small voltage confirms my guess about bad state of this battery. Let's open the case and take a look inside. There is no visible evidence why this battery failed, except for this production date. Still, it is impressive that it worked for more than 10 years. To move forward, I need to save this connector by desoldering all wires and grinding spot welds. I'll reuse it later on to assemble a new battery pack. As I mentioned before, all nickel metal hydride cells will be replaced with lithium ion cells. I'll use a Samsung INR18650 25R cells rated for 2500 mAh of capacity and 20 amps of continuous discharge current. As you already noticed, they were spot welded before. I bought them as a genuine, reclaimed, non used cells from a trusted seller. These batteries came from battery packs in which welding errors have been found. Cells were disassembled, tested and listened on a secondary market. The cells may have minimal external damage, but they have never been charged or discharged and internal resistance is according to the datasheet. The small issue is leftovers from previous spot welds. Those could be cleaned very fast with a rotary tool and a grinding disc. So, we could buy genuine 18650 cells within specs of the new cells for a solid 30% discount. I paid 3 bucks per reclaimed cell while the same new one cost 450. To keep cells in place, I designed and 3D printed a simple battery holder for 6 cells. I will make 3S2P battery configuration, which means 3 groups of cells connected in series to achieve 12 volts while each series group will have two cells connected in parallel to get a maximum capacity of 5 amp hours. To make it fit inside, a small case trimming was needed. Such a strange cell shift is needed to bypass the internal battery case structure. On closer inspection, looks like the manufacturer has accidentally designed almost perfect battery case for such conversion. Cells barely fits and still left some space for connecting tabs. Before connecting cells, I checked if all were within close voltage. To keep the cells shifted in the needed form, I made a simple jig from scrap wood pieces. Added some additional insulators on the positive side and spot welded with 0.15 mm of thickness pure nickel strips. First all parallel cells, after that connected those three groups in series. And if everything was done right, it should give us around 11 volts due to the cells are not charged. To keep those groups of cells nicely balanced, ensure proper charge and discharge, I'll use this 3S 40 amps BMS module. It is designed for 3S battery configuration and could handle continuous 40 amps load, with short peaks of 60 amps. In the market could be found two very similar looking 3S 40 amps BMS modules. Take your attention and choose the proper one with a balance function. 
while another one has protection from overcharge and over discharge only. The best visual difference is this part. On BMS with a balance feature, you will see three big resistors. I will leave a link in the video description for the right product. One by one soldered battery packs terminals to the BMS board. Before connecting output terminals, I soldered a pair of thick wires to the safe connector and glued it with 5 minutes epoxy inside the battery case. A few minutes later, both terminals were soldered and the battery could be assembled back. Since a pair of holders were trimmed inside for extra space, I covered those holes by simply gluing shortened bolts with a CA glue. The battery conversion is finished and it could be charged with any smart charger or a constant 12.6 volts power supply. But I want to go further and convert the original DeWalt nickel metal hydride charger into 12 volt lithium battery charger. From all this internal madness, I will use only those two connectors, while the rest of them could be removed. To make it fast, I use a heat gun. All removed components will be replaced with this lithium battery charger rated for 12.6 volts and 2 amps of charging current. Crack the case and took out the needed electronics. Before working further, I cut all circuit traces around the points where new electronics will be connected. Despite a lot of the solder components, there are still left some, which may cause some issues if I do not disconnect them permanently. The soldered all two contacts LED charge indicator, which will be replaced with three contacts LED from the new charger circuit. For a proper allocation, I needed to solder it with three extension wires. With a few drops of CA glue and plastic spacers, the new charger board was glued permanently. Lastly, soldered power in and out terminals. While power in terminals orientation isn't important, the charging terminals should be connected according to the battery polarity. The work is done here, time to assemble back and test it out. It powers up as the green indicator lights up and it starts charging the battery by indicating it with change LED color. After some time, the green indicator tells us that the charge is finished. Let's check that. Nice, 12.6 volts means that the battery is fully charged. Before the final testing on a drill, a few small touch-ups were made with the proper labeling of the modified battery and the charger. Ok, let's check out this battery on a real application. Wood screws? A piece of cake. M10 drill bit? Not a problem too. M25 Horstner bit? Could be gone all the way if not shavings clogged up the bit. So, does it worth it? In my case, a strong yes. The drill got back all its power. The battery capacity was increased to 5 amp hours, which is twice than before, while in the same time losing 30% of the weight. And what is most important, it all was done on the budget. The lithium battery charger, 6 bucks. The 18650 reclaim cells, 18 bucks and the BMS module, 6 bucks. 
drop a subscribe because this is a lovely thing to do. Thanks for watching, and till the next time.